My guest at this time is from New Japan Pro Wrestling. He can be seen on New Japan Strong. It's Rocky Romero. Rocky, thank you very much for taking the time to chat with me today. Hey, thanks for having me. I'm, uh, I'm, I'm glad to be here. Uh, well, let's uh, jump right into it, man. I'm very interested in what New Japan Pro Wrestling is doing here in the United States, especially because it's almost been like a forced split between the U.S. and Japanese brands. How do you feel the New Japan Strong shows and all the work you guys have been doing over on New Japan World have been going here? Uh, you know, I, I got to be honest. I feel I feel really, really good about it. Really strong about the show. No pun intended. But um, uh, yeah, I think that you know everybody's working hard to kind of create a separate brand. It didn't really necessarily, you know, that wasn't the point in the beginning of it. But you know, obviously, with the pandemic, we had to, you know, really think of of other alternatives, really of of how to keep the U.S. brand going, and um, you know. And just kind of now, now it's kind of taken a, a, a like its its own course, and that it's it's slightly different. There's like much younger talent, newer talent being uh, showcased as well, and then uh, and just kind of being its own thing with having some crossover to the uh, the Japanese brand. Uh, wasn't meant to, like I said, wasn't set out to be that way, but it, it's kind of uh, turned that way, and and I think it's kind of cool, and it's different, and still stays true to the New Japan strong style sense, you know. Yeah, absolutely. And, and let's take a step back then here, because I'm really interested to know, like, what was the initial plan here? You know, New Japan had a ton of momentum going into 2020, huge Wrestle Kingdom show to start the year off, Lance Archer, John Moxley over that US title, a lot of excitement around that. What was the original plan before you guys had to kind of create this new model? Uh, well, I, I mean, the original plan was to go uh, August 22nd to MSG, where, you know, we were going to have a uh, uh, a huge card there and uh, obviously with the pandemic and you know New York being the major hot spot especially in the beginning you know that all got thrown to the wayside so um, so yeah I mean you know we had to come up and, and kind of change the plans obviously you know we're in New Japan in general it's just like a, a live event company more than it is like an actual TV company so it's very different from uh, AEW or, or, or WWE in that sense so uh, obviously being a live event company and not being able to do live events, you know, hurts our business quite a bit, you know? So this is kind of a, maybe like a forced, uh, maybe model change in a way, you know, yeah. uh, you know, not, not saying like, Oh, it's going to be like, Oh, TV first TV, this, but um, definitely gives, uh, gives us maybe room to try things that we wouldn't normally try like a studio show, you know, shot, you know, in Los Angeles, uh, you know, not too far from the dojo and, and being able to find new talent, which we're always looking to do and always trying to add to the roster and find new players, especially new young players, because I feel like the one thing that New Japan is golden at is finding talent and then creating stars, right? Sure. So I feel like, so I feel like that, that for us, that part comes really easy. So, um, so you know, I think this upcoming... Lions Break, uh, uh, Lions Break Crown Tournament is going to be a great example of eight gentlemen that were that came through the doors of the dojo and were selected by you know Shibata or maybe somebody that I saw or just somebody who impressed at a, at a tryout or at a camp and uh, in the last couple of years since we've been open and now they're getting an opportunity on strong to really find their break. You know, I mean, that, that's kind of what Lions Break is all about. And uh, which is cool is it kind of coincides with the G1, right? So, like, you're not, you know, it's hard to watch both uh, G1 and then, you know, also probably watch Strong. And then you've got AEW, you've got WWE, you've got so much wrestling during the week. So, um, uh, I, I think it's cool to have the, the spotlight on, this, on these younger guys, uh, up and coming talent, looking for a break. And, uh, and I think this is a perfect opportunity right now. Yeah, it, it's really interesting, Rocky, like the the opportunities that have arisen for North American or United States talent because of the, the pandemic situation. What's the home office in, New, or in Japan? What do they think of this? Is this something now that you say was a, a forced progression here? Do you, do you see this model moving forward after the pandemic where maybe there's like a United States crew and, and, a, and, a, and a Japanese crew that kind of work separately? Or do you think that the old model you guys were – moving towards is going to come back here as soon as the pandemic dies down? That's a good question. Um, you know, I, I got, <laughs> you know, I got to say that eventually there was probably when they first thought of the concept of probably having 
breaking into the US. I mean, the market in the US is so huge that eventually they probably would would have wanted some kind of brand split, so to speak, you know, but, you know, not saying like this person, you know, this exclusive to that, you know, US, they're exclusive to Japan. They would live in each other's world, of course. And, you know, major stars would be going back and forth. But, uh, but I think that, uh, of course, there's a hope that like, but I think it's like, you know, probably a long term five years, 10 year plan to have, be able to tour in the US simultaneously touring in the in, in Japan as well. And we've tried that a couple times. Like uh, once a year, we do the New Beginning tour in the U.S. while the New Beginning tour is going on in Japan. So, um, I, I like I said, this is another kind of forced progression, maybe that in that way to build a roster, you know. And, and then, at, and as far as I know, New Japan Strong is here to stay. So, Good. Uh, you know, it, it's, it's a long-term commitment and hoping to build, you know the way that new Japan always builds grassroots, you know, build from the bottom. Each step is important. Uh, you know, it's not just to like run and jump and then gun, you know, and like, be like, Oh, let's just do it now. Like, you know, like capitalize on each moment, each momentum, uh, and, and make each, each one of those bricks solid, you know, as opposed to, you know, having something just crumble so fast. So, uh, yeah. so, you know, for us, you know, everything matters, you know, every, every little inch matters. So I feel like, um, yeah, so so New Japan Strong just continue on trying to you know make that show awesome, have the talent that we have, keep adding. I think fresh faces was is probably the most important piece to it, you know. Yeah, because I look at the 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 stable of talent you guys have put together for New Japan Strong, and these are some of my favorite people. You know, I love uh, Alex Zane. I'm a huge Tom Lawler fan. You know, you got ACH mm-hmm. in that mix. I mean, a ton of talented people there. It is a little exciting to think about. You know, when things could get back to normal, like these new Japan vets that have this territory over there. And here's this group of young talent that seems to be making their own new Japan identity in the States. When the time comes, it's fun for me to think about what it could look like if those two right. these, you know, could, could go head to head, you know? No. Right. And, uh, and imagine if, um, if there is an MSG next year, I don't know if there will be or not. I mean, we're, everything is so crazy right now, but you know, uh, if there is like, imagine we could get, you know, Tom Lawler versus Minoru Suzuki or, you know, a Suzuki goon, but you know what I'm saying? You know, like that would be crazy on a, on a, on a big show like that. So uh, never say never. And I feel like, you know, the pandemic for sure has, like you said, opened up so many opportunities that probably wouldn't normally be opened up in here in North America. And, uh, you know, we're hoping to just to be a part of that conversation as well, you know? Yeah. Especially for- the wrestlers. They want, they want to be a part of that conversation. Yeah. Dude, it's crazy to me, you know, because I've had the privilege of talking with a bunch of the talents you guys have had on New Japan Strong yet. You guys have been wonderful with, with the interview opportunities and everything. And I can hear it in the voice of a lot of these guys, right? You know, for, mm-hmm. for a guy like an Alex Zane, you know, this is a chance to be seen by this and by, by you all. And if the opportunity comes here where the, the bridge can be broken and go to Japan, this is an in for right. a lot of these guys that otherwise would not have been brought forward to them, you know? Yeah, I mean, look like uh, yeah, Alex Zane is a perfect example. Um but like a Fred Ross or even who, sure. oh, you know, yeah. you know, n- I feel like nobody knew how good Fred Rosser like really, really, really was because he didn't always get, you know, the right, sh- you know, light shine on him uh, in WWE. But, and then we kind of like, I, I mean, I'll, and I'll be honest and I, I, I don't mind telling Fred this, like I kind of forgot about Fred until the day he came by the show uh, whenever it was last year sometime and he w- and he was uh, saying hi to you know some of his friends juice robinson lance archer who people who he um he you know uh worked with in wwe and uh you know and he was you know we were had a had a conversation and he was saying you know this is the place that I, i've always wanted to be uh, i feel like this you know my style is good good for this place and you know and like and i'm trying to think like oh yeah what was that breakout fred rosser match that and i couldn't really think of one you know yeah and then and then the oper- this opportunity comes, New Japan Strong, he, you know, uh, and Fred just happened to, uh, to reach out to me. And I would say, dude, can I throw your name into the hat, uh, you know, with New Japan and see if, the, if they would love to have you for the Strong? He was like, please. I was like, this might be a good opportunity with the, just the timing of it. And, you know, they said, yeah. He came on and just killed. You know, I mean, like, he's yeah. so good. <laughs> like... We wrestled with him last week on Strong, and like that was the first time I got in the ring with the guy, and I'm like, 
how does nobody know how good this guy is? This is insane. It's like, how did, how did they not take advantage, uh, you know, and WWE take advantage of the talent that this guy has? I mean, he's just like a, you know, no, he don't take, you know, no, you know, just straight attitude, throwing people around. He's strong. I mean, like, this is like everything that you want in a wrestler. And I'm thinking, oh man, like, thank God he's here in New Japan. I mean, he's going to, he's going to do great here. He's going to be perfect here. I mean, like this, is, I want to see him wrestle Suzuki. I want to see him wrestle Zack Sabre Jr. Oh my God, they would kill it. You know, I want to see him wrestle Ibushi, uh, you know, Tanahashi. He could have those kind of big level matches and I don't think anybody knows it yet, you yeah. know? So I feel like, like we're about to see, uh, you know, so I, I do hope that when, uh, you know, the, the world kind of opens up and, and, you know, the, the bridge is open, like you said that, uh, you know, I hope Fred is one of the first guys to, to new talents that get to make it over. And, and really, I think he'll really impress some people. One thing I'll ask you about Fred Rosser is, you know, uh, with WWE, they acknowledge that he was gay outside of the ring, but never really embraced that as part of their product. Do you think that mm -hmm. New Japan would be willing to rally around his message and who he is personally different than the way he was treated in WWE? I mean, I think that, you know, if, if Fred, Fred is, you know, we have the openness in New Japan to, you know, be who we are and talk about, you know, whatever is going on through our lives and, and, and whatever it is. So I feel like it, it's really up to him, you know, how much he wants to, to push his message out there. Then of course the company would never stop that. They would, they'd promote him exactly the way that they would promote anybody else. And I feel like, uh, yeah, I mean, I mean, New Japan itself, doesn't necessarily get behind like they, they're focused about the in-ring stuff and that's kind of like the forefront of everything sure um and then you know obviously our personal backstories that just kind of come into play then that's a pike a part of it but um i mean yeah i mean of course i mean i mean i i, I think that it doesn't i think it's it's i think the stuff that he's doing outside of the ring and we talk about it on strong a lot and and kevin right. talks about about you know what an advocate he is outside of the ring and uh, what I think he's just general, he is like, he's just a guy that you can look, you know, kind of you can look up to, you know, and like have like, like a, like a perfect like role, like, I don't want to say put him on the spot and be like, he's the perfect role model, but like that type of figure, you know what I'm saying? Like, he's just inside of the ring, outside of the ring, he's just handling business, you know, and I think that that's really cool and, and just a great addition to the roster. Uh, my memory is not a thousand percent these days anymore, but I did interview Fred about a month ago and I believe that he spoke about talking to you and how he felt like he was willing to go to the new Japan dojo to prove yeah. himself first before actually coming on to new Japan strong. Can you talk to me a little bit about what that conversation was like and kind of your reaction when this veteran tells you he's willing to go back <laughs> to basics, you know? Right, right. No, I mean, he, yeah, this is that conversation that we had when he, uh, when he came to the LA show, I think it was last year, I want to say. And, um, and he said, uh, you know, yeah, I would love to be in New Japan. He's like, and uh, he's like, oh, I heard you guys have a dojo. And uh, he's like, I'm a big, I think he said, I'm a big fan of Shibata. I would love to go down there and train with Shibata and then train. And he said, and he, this was like right after the first match of the young lions, the LA dojo young lions had wrestled. And he was like, those guys are, are good. He's like, that's the kind of wrestling I want to do. You know, like, like I, I, you know, so, so uh, he had told me, he said, I just want to come in and train sometime. So I was like, great. You know, so I had, uh, so I had mentioned to Shibata and Shibata was like, yeah, tell him to come in anytime. We'd love to have him, you know, like it'd be, it'd be awesome to, to, uh, to see what he brings to, to the, to the training as well so um but then everything happened pandemic and everything so like you would never it never really uh you know happened but um i think eventually once shibata gets back and things are are open again like it'd be cool to have fred in there uh you know wrestling with and i know that shibata's watching every week on strong because he he's a part of the commentary team on the japanese side right so um so he's watching this guy and probably going like oh, okay and he you know i know he's like if he's throwing like say whatever you know if he if he's gonna throw one of the young lions around then it's just gonna impress your body even more because he's gonna be like okay okay oh yeah this is a guy i want to see what this guy does yeah co tell him to come down for sure now i've heard a lot of stories about the new japan dojo nothing like bad but very like tough 
right? It's like mm -hmm. an intense environment. You have to earn, earn your knee pads, you know, thousand Hindu squats, living in this building, earning your way out of the building, you know, every little thing. Is the New Japan Dojo in America similar or different than what people go through over in the traditional uh, Japanese New Japan Dojo? Um, you know, there, there's a lot of similarities in there, but there's also some unique differences that make it uh, unique because of Shibata. So, like, I feel like, you know, traditionally, obviously, the, the costume is exactly the same. The basics of the training is the same, you know, as, you know, a thousand Hindu squats. I think on the first day, the guys did probably about a thousand or 1500 Hindu squats you just to start that. off, just to say, Hey, we're here. Welcome, <laughs> you know? Um, and then, uh, you know, so the fundamentals of it is probably about the same, but then Shibata has his own twist cause he has a, his own theories on wrestling. Right. So like even some of the training that, uh, that they wouldn't do in Japan, like, uh, adding in, like certain types of lifting and, and uh, you like, you should like the equipment at the dojo is not so much bodybuilding based, you know? So I feel like, you know, the, the Japan dojo, it's very bodybuilding based, the machines that they have there and stuff like that over here. It's like more like um, kind of uh, like CrossFit. It's kind of, it's definitely like cross training more than, more than anything. Okay. And then, Shibata as well, his MMA influence is in there. And it's so it's it's kind of got its own unique flavor, but the the essentials are all the same. You the know, thousand Hindu squats out of the gate, that's always gonna happen. Yeah. If Lots of car they do a lot of card workouts and you know, the jokers are like fifty. Sometimes I heard they're like seventy five, you know, so like they're they're going to it. I just um I just worked out with the guys last week. And I mean, I hadn't had an intense workout like that in a while and I was dying, you know, so and that was just me with the with the young lions. I was like, they're like, they're like, oh, do you want to lead? I was like, no, let's do Shabbat. What Shabbat, whatever Shabbat has on the menu for you guys today, let's do that. And I was like, I need to whip my butt into shape. So, <laughs> so it's a good it's a it's a good way to get pushed. And, and it's cool, too, because having them having to work so hard and me kind of being the older veteran and, uh, you know, we push each other in the fact that like. I want to keep up with them and they, you know, and they want to, you know, they, they want to impress me, you know? So I feel like it, it's a good balance, you know? Yeah, for sure. Well, uh, something else while I've got you here, I got to bring up uh, talking shop a mania, man. Uh, what is yeah. your, what is your take on the reaction to this thing and what can fans expect from talking shop a mania deuce? Well, the first one was a mega surprise to how much uh, people enjoyed it and uh, you know, the reaction to it overall uh, you know, we just weren't really expecting that, you know, and, and, it, and it, it was pretty amazing because we put a lot of work into it. We put our own money, own time, our own sweat, our own blood into that thing. So, uh, you know, there was no backing from like a major company, you know, or anything like that. So it's like, uh, you know, it was just three of us. And, uh, you know, so we really took a big risk and to have it, you know, pay off and, and especially have put it out there and have, actually have people that enjoyed it you know so i mean if that felt great and um number two i think it's gonna be worse <laughs> what a tease <laughs> yeah yeah okay. but there uh, but i i'll give you i'll give you a scoop i i uh i hear that uh chico el luchador and chavo guerrero are gonna mix it up in a rematch and it's a Lucha Libre death match. Wow. Yeah. Okay. And um, I'll give you a little extra. Okay. I've, I've been told that Talk and Shop of Mania 2 is going to be so big, it's going to be in multiple locations. Okay. Are we going uh, to the boner yard? Back to the boner yard? I don't know. Like, what are you, what are you talking about here? I, I, that's all I can tell you. It, possibly multiple cities. Multiple? Okay. Okay. All right. Well, that's fine. Good tips there. Is that, that I feel like that's good tip, you know? Yeah, that's, that's good <laughs> right there for sure, man. And uh, I, just the last thing here, uh, I heard at Gallows and Anderson are going to get their own variety show on access TV. Mm -hmm. Are you, do you have a hand in this at all? I mean, do you know what I'm going to, I'm going to be a part. I'm going to be the third wheel on it. Uh, but it's mostly it, they're, they're, they're doing the heavy lifting. I'm, I'm just helping out uh, as a third wheel uh, as a co-host, but, uh, but it, it's pretty much them that, that are doing their, 
to this thing, but I will, uh, I will be there in support. I will be on camera. I will be hanging out. I hope to be more of like the Andy, you know, to, to Conan. Andy <laughs> Richter. Sure. Yeah. Andy Richter. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, but yeah, so we'll be a part of that. And then, uh, and then it's something that we're all working on is this, uh, this animated series called the gimmicks that's going, uh, straight to Instagram, YouTube, uh, and it's also going to be on our personal Instagrams. It's at the real gimmicks on Twitter, Instagram. Um, and it's the three of us, uh, playing sex Ferguson, Chico, Luchador, Chad, too bad. Uh, we've got Enzo. That's a part of it. And, uh, Lisa Ann as well. So, um, so it's going to be a pretty crazy wild, like the, the company that we're working for, it's called, they're called, or the working with the production company is called Toonstar. And uh, what they do is basically they have this crazy technology so that they're able to turn around this animation in like a matter of days. So like something what that would, a series like this that would probably take months to do, like we just started it four weeks ago and we're already like rolling. So like we're putting up, like putting out little pieces like, um, like you saw kind of spoofing some of the major stars in professional wrestling. And then we're going to, we're dropping the character pieces now. Chad Too Bad just dropped one. And then, uh, and then we'll actually get to the story here in a couple of weeks. But it's going to be like really fun. And we can be topical, which is cool because of the, the technology that they have. So basically anything that happens on Raw, you know, on a Monday, by the next week on our, on our show, we can have something kind of spoofing it and having fun with it. So gotcha. okay. really unique kind of fun thing uh, that we can add in, almost like SNL-like. How do you, but like Rocky, you know, kind of an outside the box question here. How do you spoof something that is already a spoof? I mean, <laughs> retribution, T-Bar, Mace, Flapjack. Uh, I mean, I think, I think that in order to spoof it, you'd have to write a good wrestling story. <laughs> that's a good question. I mean, that's a, that's a good comment. Um, I guess, you know, what's, yeah, you know what? It just gives us more material. It just gives us more material to have fun with for talking Chopper Mania. I, I think I I'm not complete. I think I I'm hurt not, your head with that comment. I'm sorry. I, but. I'm not. Yeah, I had nowhere to go. I was like, <laughs> I, uh, yeah. Um, but no, I'm glad because it, it really does give us some fun stuff to play with for talking Chopper Mania and the gimmicks. So uh, yeah, it's exciting. It's an exciting time for for the three of us in talking shop. Because we we do have a ton of projects that we're we're working on, sure. and uh, and this is another thing. Like if it wasn't for this pandemic, it, the the doors wouldn't be open. I would be in Japan. I'd be like working a ton, you know, in Japan. I wouldn't have the time to to work on this extra stuff. So um, you know, I don't know. The podcast wouldn't have probably have blown up the way that it has. You know, if the guys didn't get let go, there would have been no talking shop mania. So I mean. Uh, it's crazy how 2020 has worked out and, and, and just how it just continues to just be an insane ride. And uh, I think we're, you know, we just want to be a part of that ride, you know, especially with, when it comes to talking shop and mania. I mean, we weren't planning on doing the, the next one so soon, but it, it just feels like it's still the right time to do it. And uh, you know, we got to make people laugh because the world is crazy right now, you know? So I feel like that's our goal, you know? <laughs> 